Hello, dear friends. Welcome to the Spiritist Society of Virginia and Cardiac Radio together here to bring relief, to bring comfort to our minds, to our hearts, to our families. Open the doors of your house to the good spirits, the spirit doctors, the nurses, the therapists, so they can operate with you, coming to you to bring the relief that you need. Clarity for the mind, soothing feelings in the heart, so we can move forward in this beautiful reincarnation that we're living. The times are challenging, but like any student, we go to school to learn to be tasked, and then move forward. Our planet still is under trials and expiations, moving to regeneration, but to get there, we need to prioritize the good, but not the good only for us, the general good. It's this selfless good, the good that is good for all. Welcome, dear friends. We see beautiful friends joining us. And our dear friend Paloma is here to read a message to prepare ourselves so we are permeable for the beautiful works that is being done together with the higher spirits, with you and me. Hello, everyone. We're going to start by reading a message from the book, The Way, the Truth, and the Life, psychographed by Chico Xavier, by the Spirit Emmanuel. And the title is, What do we have to do with Christ? Ah, what do we have to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Mark 1.24 it is a big mistake to believe that the Divine Master finished his work on Calvary. Jesus continues to walk in every direction in the world. His redemptive gospel is triumphing little by little on the terrain of human hearts. This fact must be remembered, for evil spirits are trying to repel the Lord every day. Here, the evangelist is referring to the evil spirits that took over a man's body. However, such infernal intelligence continue to dominate vast organizations on earth. In the political area, for instance, which was created to maintain the principles of divine order, they appear under the names of discord and tyranny in the area of commerce formed to establish fraternity, they appear under the names of ambition and selfishness. And in religion and science, which are sacred organizations of universal progress, they answer to the names of pride, vanity, dogmatism, and sectarian intolerance. It is not only the human physical body that can suffer obsession by evil spirits. Human organizations and institutions suffer much more from it. And when Jesus draws nigh through the gospel, people and organizations quickly ask, what do we have to do with Christ? That is, what do we have to do with the spiritual life? It is necessary to be on the alert in the presence of such subtleness for the enemy has also infiltrated the circles of evangelical spiritism dressed in the glistening tunics of false knowledge. Thank you, Paloma. And now we invite you to join us in a prayer. Remember, when we pray together, we have a common goal. And this common goal is the benefit of everybody. We don't pray only for ourselves, but for loved ones who are incarnated, discarnated, for people whom you know and are in greater need than ourselves. We pray that we all send good vibrations also to the ones who are in other locations. Now let us pray. 
Dear God, we rejoice in this opportunity of praying, of being here in family, at home with you. In this moment of togetherness, when we are stronger together, We pray for those who are suffering and don't find relief. We are praying for those who are in the hospitals, nursing homes, prisons, shelters, including those who are in their very homes but are feeling lonely insecure or lost in indignation and madness we pray that the suffering of everyone be diminished the violence dissolves in the waters of love And that we become ever more compassionate. Go creating a world of true joy and harmony. We ask for your permission to begin our service as we connect with the spirit doctors, nurses, and therapists. May our homes be open to your loving messages, messengers. May we facilitate their work today and always. And so be it. All right, friends, are you ready? Remember, the spiritual care is about the mind, new ideas that we're receiving, and thus we are transforming the ways we feel and the vibrations that we co-create. To do so, our friend Kara Correa is going to join us now to share with us a lesson by Jesus from the book, Jesus in the Home. So dear friends, let us begin by visualizing Jesus in our home. It's not by chance that the title of this book is Jesus in the Home because Jesus would like to be a beautiful part of our home as well. So let us invite Jesus in. And tonight, the Spirit Mentors would like for us to focus on a lesson which our Master entitled, The Reformed Judge. So now let us listen to the Master himself. The Master in a beautiful gathering in Simon Peter's home tells us we should be cautious when judging people. Interesting remark from the master. Very interesting remark, remark from the master. Then the master says, rather the disciples say, excuse me for a moment, the disciples say, it's hard to criticize, not to criticize, because regularly educated people constantly have to voice their opinions as they go about their daily activities. So it's interesting, friends, that the disciples bring up
we're experiencing a little technical difficulty here with the sound by Kara Correa. Just hold on. She She's coming back to us very, very soon to relay the message from this book. She's sharing with us the message from this judge, the reformed judge. And we are going to check on her. One second. Carol. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, can yes, we can. Now? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So thank you, friends, for your patience. And thank you, team, for your support. I'm going to go back to sharing the PowerPoint with okay. you. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Wonderful. So let us again visualize Master We, we cannot see the slides yet. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Let me start the process again. Thank you. One moment. Now you'll be able to see it. Can you see it? Yes. So we're good. Yes. So let us continue visualizing Master Jesus amongst us. And let us imagine that he is talking directly to us at the moment, giving us very valuable immortal advice. So what is Master Jesus telling us tonight? He is kindly asking us to be cautious when judging people. And this is a very timely advice from our beloved master because we are inundated by criticism currently on the news, on social media, everywhere we go. So let us hear more about what the master has to tell us. In response to the master's advice, the disciples say, but master, it's so hard not to criticize because we regularly educated people constantly have to voice our opinions. And don't we feel this way exactly now, dear friends, that it's important for us to voice our opinion, and we may feel as though it is hard to balance uh, how we handle the situation. And another disciple says, yes, it's not easy to do the right thing. Okay, one moment, friends. Okay, so can you guys hear me now? Can you hear me? I'm going to go give you guys the explanation from the master without the slides so we can use the projector of our minds, <laughs> exercise vi our visualizing abilities. Can you hear me, Vanessa? Yes. Yes, okay. So I'm going to go ahead uh, talking to everyone about the master's lesson. So very much like we feel currently, the disciples say, but master, it is so challenging not to criticize because we are asked many times to voice our opinions. How do we go about handling such a situation? And Master Jesus exemplifies understanding right there and then, because he doesn't respond by saying, come on, didn't you hear the Sermon of the Mount? Didn't you hear the Beatitudes? Shouldn't you know any better? Don't you know I'm the Messiah? Haven't I told you to be serene? No, Master Jesus does not react 
quite the contrary. He pauses, serenely listens, and tells us that we shall be judged by the same me measure through which we judge others. In other words, if we are severe, then we shall receive severity, the master says. So if we would like others to be patient and kind with us, the master invites us to offer them the same very gifts. But why is it so hard at times for us to do this exercise? Because on earth, we are still exercising, practicing altruistic love. What is altruistic love? Is when we put the camera of our hearts and minds on the needs of another person. We are educated in society at large and for many lives we have been educated to focus the camera of our hearts and souls upon ourselves and in doing so this movement of me myself and i my needs what i want what i desire it becomes very difficult for us to look the other way so master jesus invites us to do emotional and spiritual editing. He invites us to practice understanding, to take the vitamin of tolerance, to boost our spiritual immunity. How do we practice understanding? We have to have a very powerful camera, more powerful than Steven Spielberg's camera. We have to look at a person from the angle of their inner child, from the angle of their uh, past education, from the angle of their past lives, from the angle of spiritual influence, etc. And we have to try to not take things personally. So to educate us further, Master Jesus tells a story to the disciples. And this story is meant for us as well. It, it is a gift that we can take to immortality. Of course, I cannot do justice to the master's words, but I will summarize the master's story for us. The master tells us all that there was once a judge that was very tyrannical and severe in the way in which that judge applied the laws in that uh, city, in that town. And he was so tyrannical that people felt stifled. They felt as though if they were not on schedule follow, following the law, they would get in deep trouble. Once, however, the judge's son got sick. So very late at night, the judge went out to help his son. And what happened then? He was mistaken by someone who had broken the law. And his very soldiers imprisoned the judge and treated him, applied to the very judge, the very same harsh measures that he had uh, put forth. And it didn't work for the judge to say, don't you know who I am? Look at my credentials. I'm the judge. You shouldn't do this to me. It didn't work. So at, only a day later could the judge go back to his uh, normal functions. And he spent a whole day, 24 hours, suffering the punishment that he himself had established. After undergoing this experience, the judge reformed himself. He realized that it is not enough to educate someone by limiting their possibilities, by setting boundaries. But the judge mostly realized that it is important to educate constructively, 
to educate with kindness, to educate with love. So this is where the camera of understanding comes about. How many times we, in our small circle of actions, have a position of authority, even as a mother, or as a father, or as an educator, or as a grandfather and grandmother, and we tell a little child, oh, you must go to your room now because I told you so, that's it. I have told you, no more discussion, end of discussion. When we act like this, we are, yes, implementing a boundary that may be necessary, but the question is, are we acting with love, are we acting constructively? Perhaps not so much, because we are not explaining to that child why we are doing this. We are not showing that child the educational motive behind it. We could say, we would like you to go to your room right now because you have school tomorrow, because your body needs to rest, because you deserve to be at your optimal function tomorrow and because i love you i want to take care of you this is uh justice with love it is just to discipline a child but we have the choice to discipline the human being with love or with harshness we have free will so we can choose to embrace the harsh more destructive current or the more loving and kind tolerant current master jesus is inviting us to embrace the more constructive educative measures not only for our own sake but for the sake of everyone around us and how can we practice this on a daily basis? Master Jesus finalizes this beautiful message by giving us the recipe. He tells us we need flowers of love and we shall experience also thorns of self-denial. Why does he call it thorns of self-denial? Because we have to deny our ego. We had to deny having the last word. We have to deny the illusion that we are perfect. And we have to deny the illusion that we are God in people's lives and that we know better and that it's either our way or the highway. So Master Jesus is asking us ultimately to sacrifice our ego so that in our hearts we make room for love and through love, flowers of tolerance, respect, cooperation, and understanding shall flourish. So Master Jesus and the mentors are kindly inviting us to take the vitamin of tolerance and allow flowers of love and understanding to flourish from within. Thank you, Carol. Now we would like to invite all of us to the spiritual passes. You know the good spirits, all that they need is good-willed heart. So you and I are being invited to be in a proper mindset. Our dear friend Daisy will lead us into the spiritual passes moment, followed by Luciana's prayer. Hello, dear friends. So now we invite you to this very therapeutic moment. So we ask you, if you can, to be in a room or in a place where you can close your eyes and you can follow word by word, forgetting momentarily about our daily troubles, our worries, so that we can open our hearts and receive the treatments that we need. So we invite you to close your eyes. And as you listen to this beautiful song,
Let's picture ourselves surrounded by a garden of lavender flowers. Let's transport ourselves there. It is the end of the afternoon and you see that in the horizon, the sun is setting. And the rays of light are shining even brighter, painting the sky with this beautiful reddish colors mixed with blue, deep blue color. And as you walk through this lavender field, you take a deep breath in, feeling the perfume of the lavender penetrate your lungs, travel through your whole body. It brings peace and love patient and tolerance. And as you slowly breathe out, eliminate from deep within you feelings of hatred, intolerance, anguish, And as you breathe in harmony and peace, you open your heart to the loving message of our Master Jesus. And as you breathe out, you eliminate the toxin of reincarnations after reincarnations. Telling yourself, I'm ready, Master Jesus, to receive your healing and your treatment. I let go of all the negative feelings that for millennia have been following me. And as you continue walking in this lavender field, you see the figure of someone walking towards you. And as this man approaches you, you see Jesus in front of you. His brown, caramel color hair, his deep eyes, his loving, loving look, and he embraces you like a dear, dear guide and model of our hearts. And he tells us, Don't worry, my dear child. I'm always by your side. And Jesus now invites you to collect a beautiful basket of lavender flowers with him. And together with Jesus now, he takes you to a place of your choosing where you need to reconcile with someone in your life, where the feeling of intolerance still predominates in your heart. But now with Master Jesus beside you, 
you deliver this beautiful basket of flowers to your dear brother or sister, incarnate or discarnate, with whom you have maybe for millennia been in battles, emotional, verbal battles. And with him by your side, you feel ready to deliver these flowers of forgiveness, tolerance, and patience. Feeling now so much lighter, we continue to visualize Jesus next to us. And our whole body is enveloped in this beautiful light of the lavender flower. As we continue this moment with our final prayer with our dear Luciana. Dear Mother, Father God, dear mentors of Cardiac Radio and SSVA, thank you so much for being united with us, bringing us so important teachings for our daily lives. Thank you for showing us to be more loving and caring to everyone that encounter us, reminding us that we are all brothers and sisters all of us come from the same creator. So we are one. Thank you to open our eyes in order for us to be more diligent in how we punish people around us and how we love them. Thank you, dear Father, for everything that was provided to us today so we could be here receiving those blessings from above. Thank you for the place of work, for our place of worship and treatment. We want to say thank you for all our brothers and sisters that are working to help other brothers and sisters in greater need. We also want to pray for all the homes, the whole planet, because we all need your love. We all need more fraternity, understanding, loving care for each member in our home. May we see them as you, as part of the creator, so we can treat them with respect and love. We also want to pray for all of those that has no home to go and have physical place to live. May they also feel the blessings that we all received and we share with them. Dear Master, there is so much for us 
to ask but you know exactly what each one of us need and as we think about what we are in need in this moment we feel the certainty of your loving and care knowing that you're listening to us And with your permission, dear mentors, doctors, nurses, guardian angels, we close the healing treatment of tonight, and so be it. Thank you, friends, for joining us, for being here with us. Thanks. We are very thankful to the whole team and to those who are home supporting the current of these healing moments. May we spend the rest of the night still in this mode, the mode of gratitude, of serenity, and reflecting on the message of tonight, which contains the very remedies that we need. Drink your glass of water through which the good spirits poured the remedies and with intention receive the healing vibrations that you and your loved ones need. We thank you all and a big hug of gratitude and until later tonight. Right? You want to say bye? Bye. Bye, friends. See you then. Ah, <laughs> uh,